Now, following the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, Iran has officially responded, um, not in a military sense, but so far they've put out some statements on social media. So now following the attack, Iranian state TV had ended up uh, cutting scheduled broadcasting to show photos uh, of Soleimani uh, and ask for a call for prayers. Okay, but look, understandable, we'd, we'd do the same thing, right? Um, so now this is kind of important. So Soleimani was kind of a big deal when it came to Iran. He was incredibly influential uh, and he was revered inside of the Iranian government. Yeah, he was very, very close to the um, Ayatollah, to Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, and actually held more power than President uh, Rouhani. So that's really important because when you look at how important he was inside of the Iranian government, that kind of shows you what kind of response militarily we are to expect. This is kind of like, uh, for example, Iran droning Mike Pence. Okay. Just randomly, Mike Pence goes and visits uh, Mexico and Iran drops a drone on him. I'm, what do you think would happen, right? Hey, you're going to go to war. We'd be bombing them yesterday if that happened. Within five minutes, we would be launching a war. Um, so look, that, and that's the thing. They will respond and then we will respond and then there will be endless conflict where we will continue to attack each other until this blows up into a disastrous war. All right. Uh, so now, let me go to another statement here. This is uh, Mohammad Javad Sarif. That's Iran's foreign minister. They uh, had a strong condemnation to this. Quote, the U.S.'s act of international terrorism targeting and assassinating General Soleimani, the most effective fighting force uh, or the most effective force fighting the Daesh, which is uh, their word for ISIS, al-Nusra, another terrorist group, al-Qaeda, another terrorist group, uh, is extremely dangerous and a foolish, foolish escalation. So were they fighting ISIS? Yes, uh, they were very effective in fighting ISIS. Uh, but of course, that doesn't necessarily make them allies uh, in this fight, but enemy of my enemy, uh, enemy, not necessarily my friend, but Maybe we shouldn't go and assassinate their leaders. Maybe it'd be a smart idea to not do that. Okay. Um, especially when there is no evidence that they're going to attack us. I know what uh, Mike Pompeo is saying, but there's actually no evidence. And the fact that the, the Pentagon has lied to us before, our intelligence agencies have lied to us before in Iraq. Why should we believe anything that they say without hard, hard evidence? Everybody remember weapons of mass destruction? Yeah, of course, we should remember, uh, but conveniently, everybody in the establishment media, everybody in the Trump administration, everybody's cheering on this war, these right wingers who are now supposed to be against the wars in Iraq and supposed to be against all the wars because, uh, well, Donald Trump's the anti-war president, right? Uh, apparently not. They have conveniently forgotten about all the lies. These are the same people that say the FBI is the deep state. What, what, what's wrong? What's the matter? Now it's the deep state. Now you believe them? Now you believe them. Oh, okay. I, I see what's going on. But anyway, um, one more uh, part of this tweet here from uh, Mr. Zarif. He says, the U.S. bears responsibility for all consequences of its rogue adventurism. Yikes. So look, I don't like that. Um, but look, nobody knows what response it's going to be. Like I said, it could be uh, cyber cyber warfare. Um, it could be using proxy forces to attack our forces as well. Uh, there had been some rumors that certain air bases were under attack, but again, no confirmation of that. Um, and so we don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> this is a, it is a very tense period of time now. It's almost as if we're in the calm before the storm. Okay. So again, we don't know what's going to happen, uh, what it's going to look like, but already the state department is saying, well, we are expecting something. <clears throat> and the uh, government has sent about 3,500 troops to that area and has urged all U.S. personnel to leave uh, Iraq immediately. Um, so now we are expecting the worst. And so now here's the thing. They won't attack the U.S. mainland, right? But likely our forces in the region. Or uh, maybe attacking Israel or Israeli forces uh, or even attacking oil fields in Saudi Arabia. Right. 
uh, or get again, get their proxies to do some of those terror attacks. And of course, we'll have to respond. And it gets into that whole disastrous cycle. Okay. Uh, and by the way, this could also end up leading to our proxies being armed by us and us using our proxies to fight their proxies. And so what, what happens when that, when we do that, right? Well, once we start flooding the area with weapons and arms, very good chance those same weapons and arms are going to be used against us. It happened when we were using uh, Afghanistan, uh, the Mujahideen, as a proxy force against the Soviet Union. It happened when we were having the Iran versus Iraq uh, conflict, when we were helping Iraq versus Iran. And those same weapons end up getting used against us. So, so we have a pattern of this. We have a pattern of this. Uh, and so it's disastrous. And this has opened up a gigantic can of worms that we are not going to be able to put back. The Pandora's box is being opened right now. Uh, and it's a complete and utter disaster in the region. But guess what? Defense contractors, their stock went up today. So you have Raytheon. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, some of those others, uh, you know, uh, defense contracts. Can't think of the name right now. Uh, but we've already seen three major defense contractors increase their stock uh, price and oil prices are on the rise. So somebody's out to make a buck, whatever the response is going to be. So uh, we already know. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I, I should say we don't already know for 100% certain, but I have this feeling that it's going to get worse, that it's going to escalate further because it seems to be that's exactly what the military industrial complex uh, and the neocons in the government and the defense contractors want. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the you guys the viewers instead of big corporate ads look you know the show you know how i'm not in favor of big corporations anyway so help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron patreon.com slash tyt nation that goes a long way to help us keep the lights on and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media